Gracie, Hannah Gracie. In 1993, our father created the Ultimate Fighting Championship to showcase the effectiveness of jiu-jitsu to the world. And now that every professional fighter has added it to their arsenal, we're breaking down precisely how they're using it so you can add it to yours. Man! Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix. Um, Overing versus Perdon. You could just tell he didn't want to spar. He didn't want to roll yeah. on the ground with Fabrizio. But it's okay though. Yeah. We understand that. It's the same way GSP didn't want to roll with Jake. Smart. Hey, it's the game and they play it well. Um, we weren't going to do a breakdown for this because there wasn't that much Gracie breakdown worthy content on the main card. Um, Barnett catches Rogers in that arm triangle from the mount. Pretty nice, but Rogers tapped before it was even locked in. So it's like, boom, we've already broken down the arm triangle like 12 times. <laughs> um, so we weren't going to do the breakdown. But then Joe Rogan was like, Gracie Brothers on Twitter. Gracie Brothers. Are you guys going to break down the Connor Hewn, um, Magno Almeida fight from the Strike Force show? And it's Father's Day. And we're like, yeah, for real? Like, on Father's Day? You know? So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so we weren't going to break it down. Special request from Joe Rogan. We're going to keep it real. The truth is, the fight is off the hook. But we didn't think that many people cared because it was kind of on the undercard. It wasn't on the main card. We thought it was beautiful. Joe thought it was beautiful. So, there must be a lot of people who think it's beautiful, so it's about to get broken down. Crazy, the guy got his arm just located. We gotta talk about lots of things. Round one, round two, round three, round one. Crazy leg lock sequence from the bottom of the half guard. Round two, butterfly catch from the bottom of the side mount, two guard retrieval, two arm bar from the guard, belly down transfer, near side shoulder, hyper extension, uh, uh, relief, get out, escape, round three. What are you I'm talking about right now? I'm just what are you saying? saying? Getting a little forecast so I don't forget all the details. I don't even know what you're saying. What are you talking Show us this. 10 4. <laughs> Belly down transfer. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Half guard, half guard. So he landed at half guard, right? Um, Hewn got the takedown, and Almeida's in the bottom of the half guard. Immediately, Almeida starts underhooking this arm right here, starts going to create space for this uh, possible leg lock or a sweep attempt. But he's really extending the leg, and he had trouble getting his leg through. So Hewn stood up, stand up for a second, stands up, then he switched to this, started catching the leg here. Um, he cleared that leg out of the way, started to sprawl his leg back down, came back under, and then finally got his leg over this way for an attempted knee lock from the bottom of the half guard, trying to straighten it out. But he got his knee bent and on top of it so well, get your knee on the ground, bro, that he couldn't actually straighten it out. So he ended up going to his knees here, okay? And when you do this, you can often fall this way, which is what he was trying to go for, to extend here, okay? Leaving it very exposed. That's kind of the standard roll to the knee lock from the bottom of the half guard. The problem was his base was so good that he wasn't getting rolled that way. He wasn't falling this way, which forced uh, Almeida to duck his head and try to kick him over this way for the extension here. That didn't work. He was trying, 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 the leg bent, and then the, uh, the homie swim inside my leg right there, got my leg out of the way, which put us back in the half guard situation. Basically, the, the leg was in danger the whole time, but you being on the bottom, yes. it's difficult to, to really apply effective pressure. So you almost need the person, myself, to be laying down. Yeah. He wasn't having that. He was, uh, Connor was not going to let himself be on the bottom, so he kept the gravity on top. I made it so frustrated that he ended up going for the toehold footlock. So he got this foot right here, he sat up, he got the toehold, he got a couple hammer fists in the face right here as a result, which is very risky at this stage right here, but he wanted it. Then he pulled him and he lost his balance forward a little bit and we ended up here. And then they were squeezing here on the footlock. Now, it, it looked more dangerous than it actually was because the truth is, for the toehold to be effective right here, you need so much range of motion to be able to break it. But the fact that he's sitting on his foot and his, his butt was almost touching his own uh, he healed. It really prevented the range of motion for the break right here. The leg of control on this one was pretty loose. He kept trying. Eventually, they rolled over one time, roll over. Boom, the legs went. And this is when it got kind of dangerous, when he actually got it away from his body. And now we did more break. This is a dangerous situation. You can tell. He didn't want to tap. Yeah, he was so stubborn. He trains at 10th Platinum, I think, right? Yes. He's not going to tap. He's got that attitude like, you know what? I'm going to die before I tap. <laughs> So anyways, that was the, uh, that was the leg lock sequence, the toehold didn't go through. <laughs> Second round, they landed a uh, takedown for Hewn again, uh, made it on the bottom of the side mount. And it was a cool little move that we've taught in a Gracie Insider Technique of the Month, butterfly catch from the side mount. He turned sideways, he tried to go for a high step mount transition, but look what he did, he closed the door right here, elbow and knee, butterfly, half butterfly catch. He went for the sweep, he opened the guard, and then both these came in from the butterfly guard. It would have been cool to see Connor get the mount and see what he would do. Connor on Mount on Almeida, yes. Yeah, I want to see his game from the Mount. Be yeah. interesting. 
Anyway, the butterfly happened, then he recovered full guard off the butterfly guard, and we were here. Um, uh, Connor had a very heavy-handed, very leany, very leany forwardy uh, guard, guard top strategy, you know, which made it very easy for Almeida to spin for Omlot. That's why he got it several times during the fight. Um, so Almeida would basically hug this arm as soon as it became available, hug him right at the glove, making it hard to pull the glove out. It's getting trapped which is a great tactic. And then you use the hip angle, boom, underhook the leg, open the legs, high shot, and he caught it. Okay, nice lock up here, heels down tight, legs locked, heels pinching. Arm lock from the guard. Now, from here, he started to put a pressure so quickly that in the second round, about three minutes left, Hewn got desperate on the brakes, we started leaning forward, and that caused Almeida to go to a belly down transfer. There are two ways to belly down transfer. One is inside shoulder, one is outside shoulder. Inside shoulder is where you go under, Boom, go back. Outside shoulder is when you go on the nearest, I mean, um, inside shoulders under, outside shoulders where you spin, you know what I mean. From here, go belly down, pressure here. The second round, they did the, the inside shoulder transfer. The third round, they did the outside shoulder, head fully under. Great to see both of those. And we ended up in this situation here. Talk to us. Here, right here, he stepped over. Yes. Correct? He threw himself over. And then what did you do? Try to grab my ankle right here already? That was the third round one. Third this round. Still second round, he just went to the break right here. And the arm started slipping out little by little, pushing it away. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is people were wondering why it didn't break. And the truth is... It hurt. It hurt a lot. But the problem is for an arm lock to be effective, we want perpendicularity. I don't know if that's a real word, but it works. It works. Perpendicular. We want to be like teed up. Like right now, we're perpendicular so I can break his elbow because we're lined up, our his that way and I'm this way. Yeah, the but fact that he is stomach down and I'm stomach down, my arm is in position. As soon as I step over and I start to... Kind of turn, actually, because he was stomach up. He was facing up yeah, a little more. He was sideways, right? There it was. Yeah. So lay a little more on your back almost. There you go. And I'm facing stomach down. My arm is over rotating. In addition to that, we aren't perpendicular. We're now linear. We're lined up. So this messes us up big time, you know? Um, and that's where we ended up. And they stayed here for a little while, a little while, a little while. Before you know it, the arm slipped out fully and it was done. Okay. Second round, third round. Yeah, so belly down transfer, got messed up, he slipped out. Third round, there was an attempt, a flash of an attempt that you guys missed. I made his wrist is off the hook. And there was a flash of an attempt from the standing open guard where he picked him up with his feet. Well, Almeida picked up Connor, held both of his wrists, and he went for it, but didn't catch it. But if, for those who knew, you know what we're talking about. He went for this helicopter armbar transition here, boom. Or, or he just wanted the full sweep to the mount. No, I think it was armbar. Well, there's no way to know. It's <laughs> armbar's cooler. Well, I have to ask him. <laughs> or you could have swept him over the top and just went to the mount. Boom, well, ended up mounting. And then went for the arm from there. He loved those arm locks. Cool. So he went for the helicopter, didn't work. And then he went back to the guard. And this time in round three, he hugged again, angled again, caught it. And he didn't even wait for the stack up, which is very smart. A lot of times arm locks happen, especially against Quinton Rampage Jackson. And you get picked up and you get dropped on your head. And that submits you or makes you let go. So in order to prevent the possibility of either stacking or getting slammed, Almeida had this habit of going belly down. So with this hand that is already in the underhook on the leg over here, he uses it to keep the arm and push his own head under and out the back. Boom. And this is already giving me the angle to just throw my leg over. Yeah, so that oh. caused the problem there. And from here, oh, no, sorry, go back to where we were for a second. This one ended up like this. Uh, Almeida wanted uh, Connor to end up on his back, so he grabbed the ankle with hopes of pulling this and doing this. That's, That's what he mean. hoped to happen. Go back. But show us what he did right here, bro. Boom. And then both went. Boom. And then he stepped back over, like boom, and came back to the mount. Yes. Boom. So he didn't lose his balance the way Almeida hoped for. And now from here, he's trying to break and break, and this is where it dislocated. Go, 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 go. Pop, whatever. And because uh, supposedly his arm actually dislocated or popped something major, a ligament in there, and major inflammation. He started putting this foot like in here. Yeah, it got all messed up. Boom. And then they ended up in a situation where Almeida actually got up. Almeida got up on top of the fight. They ended up in this upside down rubber guard situation. Right down. Boom. Boom. Legs up. It was the other side. Boom. Like this. From getting out of that arm, like they ended up in this very weird situation here where his leg was trapped, half guard. He stepped out, this arm was over, and, uh, and you could see Connor was trying to do something rubber, something rubbery here, grabbing his foot, but it was already side mount, so it's not gonna happen. His head started to slip out, and in this arm right here, Almeida started to wrap this neck right here. 
that little wrap right there, as Connor let go of the, of, the, of the rubber guard, he went to his knees and he locked right here. Boom! For the Dara show, it was beautiful. That was a nice transition. But um, Connor kind of rolled straight into it, you know, because it was set up already. Instead of turning into this where it could get locked from here, effort should have been dedicated to taking this arm off my rib cage, you know, pull it down under my body now. Yes, and getting your elbow out. You can't let your arm and your neck get isolated like that. From the mount, from the north south, from the side mount, anywhere. So it got wrapped. Then homie went to his knees right here. He locked it up, but he fell down here. Boom. And now he's choking him here. This is attempted choke. This will go. But he's moving away too well. Yeah, the more you move towards me, he yes. gets tighter. If you could have maybe hooked my leg, you know, and now squeezed, it would have gone. Mm -hmm. But he was using his hand to maintain his distance intelligently. Yeah. And then he brought his other hand across the stomach. But this hand, hand came out here. And the head popped out. Yeah. And because the arms, you could tell he was a little tired. Almeida, right? Went for so many submissions and eventually it's slippery and his arms are oh, giving out. Exhausted. Yeah, five, three fives. Connor punched the hands through, he's gone. So, more of the story. What do you think you learned from this? I thought it was interesting judging, you know. I mean, I would have given more credit to Almeida for sure. It was unanimous for, for Hune, but man, those submissions were off the hook. His threat was very good. The one problem was at the very end, how he just got his face punched so much, right? How Almeida was just letting so many punches happen. The last, after he lost the last arm, like he was close guard, doing this. It was boom, boom, more booms. Boom, so it just kept going, man. This guy just hanging up, elbow to the stomach he did, elbow up. Boom, this is good stuff if the bottom person is not defending. You guys, in a real fight, he who manages the distances, manages the damage. And from here, Almeida was doing no effort to manage the distance, so uh, he went, went to work, just well, punch whatever he wanted. I think Almeida wanted one more arm lock. Yeah. And he actually went for it the last second. It ended with another arm lock attempt. Yeah, I just feel like, man, he sat there. And I think that for the judges, seeing that, that kind of hammer fist, all the crazy punches, really affected them, you know? Correct. just sitting here letting them all happen. And they, they weren't that bad, but they were landing some of them. Correct. It could look like he's getting beat up, but really, he knew. Almeida knew that the punches weren't going to knock him out. He yeah. could feel it. He probably took one or two, and he's like, you know what? Okay. These aren't that bad. My hands are the way I've been hit before harder by whoever, Fabrice, yeah. whoever doing. So there's no need to let go right now. And plus, yeah, the value of holding the guard. Yeah. It's possible that if you were to let go, he could stand up and yeah. run away. That's now, the truth. That's the truth. I'm not going to knock you out. I'm sorry. The idea, I'm, you're not going to get knocked out anymore if I run away. Right. But I have but, to get up and we got to go trade more and get back to the ground. So I made him so confident from the guard that he wanted to keep it closed. But to block punches, you have to open your guard. There's no ultimate punch block from here. This is. Too much free shot. You can block here all you want, but they're gonna find their end. You have to stage one, stage two, stage three, stage kick in your face, stage four if he stands up. You have to use your legs to manage the distance, man. But you know, again, that's another. He stands up. The referee says you gotta stand up, and then the whole thing, and the guy runs away. Whatever. Man. So at the end of the day, it was it was a very good display of jiu-jitsu. I think that's why Joe Rogan liked it so much. Oh yeah, he enjoys so, the art and the, the movement. Yeah, I wish more fans would like him though. Yes, you know? he well, understood. Well, he trains a little bit. That's why we're doing. That's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we're doing what we're doing. You guys, education. Bottom line: try a jiu-jitsu class, and you will enjoy that fight as much as Joe did, as much as we do, as much as most people. Why do you think they're still not trying it though? Scared. Scared of what? They think it's not for them. You know what they think? They think that. Jiu-Jitsu practice is like MMA. Is what they see in the cage. No. They associate that. No, it's so much more fun. Dang. You guys, what is that shirt you're wearing right there? Don't be jealous. Unreleased. The new Andy Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Forever t-shirt. Dang, what does it say down here in the corner? Read it to them. The Jiu-Jitsu that I created was designed to give the weak ones a chance to face heavy, the heavy and the strong. Dang. Grandmaster Andy Gracie. My friends, we weren't gonna do this, but we did it. So, you guys, Chris, come on in. This is Chris. Introduce Chris. This is Chris Saunders right here. Dang. Chris Saunders is Hickson's first over. black belt in America. Hickson, you know, student for so many years. Now he's here keeping it super real, helping us out with the academy, beginner classes. Trains with everybody. Hickson Hoyce, Hoyler, my dad. He legendary, legendary. legendary. Now it's come full circle. <laughs> These guys were like one and three when I started. Dang. Um, so you guys, Keep it real. Thank Joe Rogan for this one because it wouldn't happen if we didn't ask for it. And uh, keep it real. Follow us on Twitter at Gracie Brothers, and we're gonna announce the release date for the new Eddie Gracie T-shirt and the Technica T-shirt. He who has the most wins. He who has the most technique wins. Dang, that's why he don't get to wear that one. <laughs>